about Dominique? Dominique was the daughter of film and television producer turned best-selling novelist Dominic Dunn. Her brother was actor-producer Griffin Dunn. Her aunt and uncle, the celebrated authors Joan Didion and John Gregory Dunn. Poltergeist marked Dominique's first major film role. Tragically, it was also her last. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I welcome you. And if you're returning, I welcome you back. Let me go in the sun here so you guys can see me better. Okay. Now, today's vlog, I'm in a little uh, quiet neighborhood. So I'm going to try to keep my voice down a little bit. But I want to tell you about the murder of Dominique Dunn. Tell you a little bit about what happened and show you the driveway where she was murdered um so tragically but it's right here west hollywood uh let's go check it out and i'll tell you a little bit about it Alrighty. so the story really starts at a restaurant called ma maison where a sous chef named john sweeney worked now he plays into it because he was the ex-boyfriend of dominique dunn but Let's tell you more about Dominique Dunn and what happened. Alrighty. So Dominique Dunn was an actress. She, she had a boyfriend or ex-boyfriend named John Sweeney. But Dominique got her breakout role as Dana Freeling in Poltergeist. And on October 30th, 1982, John Sweeney, her ex-boyfriend, strangled her. Right in the driveway of this home, right where the brown gate is. We'll walk over there and I'll let you check it out. But after being strangled, Dominique fell into a coma and only five days later, on November 4th, 1982, Dominique Dunn died. Sweeney's trial started in August, 1983. Dominique Dunn's father is well-known author and journalist, Dominic Dunn. To be sitting four feet away from the man who killed your daughter, who was all dressed up like a priest and read the Bible. I mean, it was, it made me enraged at the show business thing that justice has uh, become, you know, dressing somebody up in a part. And I hated him. I just hated him. And, uh, and to be that close to him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it so affected one of my sons, uh, that, uh, you know, when they yelled out in the courtroom, Your Honor, Alex Dunn has tears in his eyes. And, and they kicked him out of the court. It was horrible. It was the most horrible experience. But, you know, when I wrote that article, I understood for the first time that I had power. Okay, the Dominique Dunn story really starts with her boyfriend, John Sweeney. See... They were breaking up and he wanted to talk to her. So he came over to this house, talked her into it and brutally murdered, murdered her in the driveway. I'll show you where it happened. It was right there, that house. Now, Sweeney was abusive to Dominique for a long time. And they had broken up only a few weeks before now, he had moved out of the house, this house right here. So on October 30th, 1982, a few weeks after Sweeney and Dunn had broken up, Dunn was right here at her West Hollywood home rehearsing for the miniseries V with David Packer. While she was on the phone, Sweeney had the operator break into the call and Dunn told her friend, oh God, it's Sweeney, let me get him off the phone. Now, 10 minutes later, Sweeney showed up at Dunn's home. He knocked on the door at 8723 Rangeley. And after speaking to him through the locked door, she agreed to come out onto the porch. Outside, the two began to argue. Later, Packer said that he heard smacking sounds, two screams and a thud. Concerned, he called police. 
Now Packer left the home through the back entrance, approached the driveway and saw Sweeney in some nearby bushes, right here, right in front of the house. Now, Sweeney told Packer to call the police. When the police arrived, Sweeney met them in the driveway with his hands in the air and stated, I killed my girlfriend, I tried to kill myself. Sweeney later testified that he and Dunn had argued, but he could not remember what happened. Dominique Dunn was transported to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where she was placed on life support. On November 4th, her parents consented to have her removed from life support. Now, on the night of the Dunn's attack at this house, responding officers found Sweeney standing by Dunn's unconscious body in her driveway. When he told the officers, I killed my girlfriend, he was immediately arrested and charged with murder. Now, it all happened right here. Now, the trial was well, well publicized and Dominic Dunn talked quite a bit about what happened with his uh, daughter and about the murder. It's a sad story, so tragic for a young actress who was um, so well known, just starting to make her way. But this is where it happened. It really is a tragic story. Tragic story of a relationship gone wrong. Someone being brutally murdered in the driveway of her home. And uh, it's just senseless. Right there, there's the front porch. There's the front porch that Dominique Dunn would have come out to come and talk to Sweeney in the driveway. Over here are the bushes that he would have been hiding, but that is the front door that Dominique Dunn would have come out. There's the driveway. There's the driveway where the senseless, brutal murder happened of Dominique Dunn and where he met police in the driveway. Right here. There's the front door. She came right down here. She was in this driveway and he brutally, brutally murdered her. He waited in the driveway for the police to show up. It happened right here. Alrighty guys, such a tragic event. Let's go over and pay our respects. And let me show you Dominique Dunn's final resting place. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I am at Westwood and I want to show you the final resting place of murder victim Dominique Dunn. She was an actress, she was the daughter of Dominique Dunn, and I've told the story of her murder. Let's check out her final resting place. Right there, Dominique Dunn. So I showed you the house and the driveway and told you a little bit about the murder. But now let me just tell you a little bit more about Dominique Dunn that I might not have touched on earlier. See, she was actually born not far from here in Santa Monica, California. And her on-screen debut was in the television film Diary of a Teenage Hitchhiker. Now, she ended up having a recurring role as Erica on in Family, and then she had a role on the comedy series Breaking Away. But, as I had mentioned earlier when I was showing you the property, her breakout role really came as Dana Freeling in the horror film Poltergeist. Now, 
I showed you where it happened. I told you what had happened on October 30th, 1982. But let me talk a little bit about more about what happened after that. Now, as I had mentioned, she was transported to Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles after that it all happened with Sweeney. She was placed on life support and she never regained consciousness. Now, over the following days, doctors performed brain scans and there was no brain activity. On November 4th, her parents consented to have her removed from life support. At 11 o'clock the morning of November 4th, 1982, doctors pulled Dominique off life support. I think it's not possible to ever sort of say in words what the death of my child did to my life or did to the life of my sons or did to the life of my former wife. It totally, completely changed us all. At the request of her mother, Dunn's kidneys and heart were donated to transplant recipients. Her funeral was held on November 6th at the Church of the Good Shepherd in Beverly Hills. I'm doing a separate vlog on the Church of the Good Shepherd. There's been many well-known funerals there and weddings, um, but look for that in a separate vlog. Now, this was such a tragedy. And on September 21st, 1983, after eight days of deliberation, the jury acquitted John Sweeney of second-degree murder, but found him guilty of the lesser charge of voluntary, voluntary manslaughter. He was also, also convicted of assault for the altercation with Dunn that occurred on September 26, 1982. And on November 7th, Sweeney was sentenced to six years in prison for manslaughter and an additional six months for the assault charge. Now, Dominic Dunn was livid, and he had kept a journal throughout the trial. His journal writings were later published in an article titled Justice, a father's account of the trial of his daughter's killer that was featured in the March 1984 issue of Vanity Fair. Now for years, Dominic Dunn had kept track of where John Sweeney was going and where he was living. But after a while, he just decided he wouldn't give any more of his life or attention to John Sweeney. Who took his daughters. Resting place of poor murder victim Dominique Dunn. It's such a tragic, tragic tale. Well publicized. Dominique Dunn went on, her father, to talk about it for years and years. This is the final resting place of Dominique Dunn. Alrighty, guys. I'm glad I got to show you the final resting place of Dominique Dunn. It's right here at Westwood. Instead of probably referring to her as murder victim, it should be accomplished actress. I'm glad I got to show you it. Subscribe. Let's go on more adventures together. Thanks, guys.